This is the text animation that many of you have been waiting for, and I will show you how to create it. Now, it's not that complicated, and we're only going to use one node, which is called the warp node. So the first thing you're going to need is your text. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to go and add a text plus right here into our timeline. And here we're going to modify what we want to have. Now, if you want your text to be exactly stacked on top of each other, let's say like these, but it's not exactly stacked on top of each other, right? We're going to have to adjust the size and a couple of other things. Then you can fix this inside Fusion because we're going to basically just create a copy of this template and make sure that you've done these after you've already known what you wanted to say, right? So we're going to get rid of the top one and then on the other one, just get rid of text. And now we're going to have to position them with the layout controls that we have here so that they are both basically covering exactly the same area. If you want these to be a little bit more easy, what you can do is grab a rectangle or a background node and we're going to add a rectangle to these so that we can create our box that's going to be covering our whole area basically. And we're going to have to make these smaller or make these to be a square like that. Then we're going to go to this border width and increase the border width like this. After that, we can move our text here all the way up and try to position it right in the middle. And then on this one, the same thing. That way we're going to increase the size and try to make them be as close as possible to the edge of our box. The whole thing about matching text is that you have to tweak these until you basically get to the point where they're both pretty much perfect, right? Now that we have that there, what we're going to do is copy these again and we're going to connect these and create another one that's coming from behind and that's going to be our background color. So press T and then on this rectangle, we're going to make this a solid and we're going to change this to whichever color you want to change this. So if you want the background to be, no, I don't know, let's say let's leave this background like that brownish and change the border to the yellow one similar to the one that I showed you in the example. After you have that ready, we're going to press two and then pre make sure that here, press control T with these merchant nodes selected. That way we're going to bring everything else forward and our text is going to be right in the middle. After you have made all the tweaks so that your text is pretty much all surrounded by these box that we have here, we can go and add the grid warp effect, which is this one. And we're going to add it right here. Now on this grid warp effect, we want to have our rectangle or a copy of this rectangle, but we want this to be right at this section right here, right on our on the edge of our border. Why is that? That way, when we animate this grid warp, it just gonna limit there and it's not gonna bring our text over that section. So we're gonna have to adjust these basically by just dragging our edges right here, maybe, and then the same thing on the top and basically basically tweaking it and moving it around until we reach the exact point where we need to be. Now, the next thing that you can do is check out Twavi.com for some of my free assets for DaVinci Resolve. And you can also check out the split screens pack that I've just recently updated. If you don't want to tweak around the rectangle mask, what you can do is simply grab a polygon mask because it's a little bit easier to draw things around with this one. Click right here, zoom out, hold shift, and then click right here again. Go to this section, hold shift, go up again, hold shift. And then once you're done, just go and clip up right here, the close polygon or press shift O. In my case, by default, these come out inverted. So I'm going to deselect that. And then I'm going to connect these to our mask right here. Nothing is happening yet because nothing has been added to this yet. Now, how does the grid warp work? Go from magnet type to select. That way, whichever line you move, only that area is going to move. Then we're going to have to increase our grid size by a bunch up to like 25, maybe. Basically, what you want to do is increase your grid until you have one of these lines right here and another one on this side. In this case, 30 seems to be the point where we want to be at. And then probably the same thing will go for the Y grid size. That way we are pretty much at that point right there. It's not going to be perfect right here because we have this one right here, but for the tutorial, it should do. Okay. Now how does the animation work in this case here at frame zero, we're going to create a keyframe. And what happens now is that when you go to, let's say frame 24, whatever you move like this, then this whole animation will happen at that moment. Now, how do you make this look good and not as crazy as it just looked right there? Now to animate these, how does it work? Well, all we have to do is move these points right here. Let's say we want to move 
the one that says more and push these towards the top. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move this text section up a little bit higher like that. And then select this other section like these, and then basically stretch everything one by one until you get to a point where you like. You can also adjust these a little bit more so that it's not as tight in that section. So that it doesn't look that weird, right? And then we have our first animation right here. Whoop, it's a little bit slow. But then you can go to the grid warp section, select the spline tool, and then adjust these like that by selecting all, press F, then press T, and you can adjust the ease in and ease out options. It looks like that, then it goes there. I don't know why I put frame 29. I meant to do it frame 24. Now, how can you fix this? Well, go to your spline section here, select this area and holding shift gets bugged out sometimes, so it doesn't want to do it. Okay, now we're at 24. Perfect. Then from here, what you can do is you can leave a few frames. So there's a little bit of a, uh, like a time stop, or you can right away go to the next 24 frames or whatever frame you choose and move the next section. I think we can move the more here towards the right and also have to adjust these. Oops. A little bit. We're going to have to adjust that section there too, because they are all linked. If you don't want them to be linked like that, you're going to have to create some more mask and copy of these grid warp, but that's a little bit more advanced. So for the first time you build this effect or you try it out, I would say that you should just do a simple, try to do simple movements until you reach and get comfortable with the type of movement that you have created. Then all we have to do is adjust the spline again, pressing F. But sometimes if you have already added the spline curve here, if you press F, it will reset it. So make sure to hold control and then just manually adjust these right there. Then we can manually hold in control, adjust these one too. And if we want the ease out to be a lot longer, so it stays longer, just do that. I'm gonna move it like that there, there. And now it's gonna take a little bit before it moves to the side and it has like a little punchy movement. Now, after you have done your movements, as many as you want, obviously, how do we go back to normal without it looking weird? It's actually a lot easier. We're going to go from 48, let's say we're going to add 24 more frames. At 72, all we have to do is go to these R right here, and that will reset all the points. You can also just select these exact points that you have here, or a few of them maybe. And if you want to bring only these ones to normal, press these small R, which is going to be resetting only the selected points right there. And that looks interesting too, if you want to have that, obviously. But if we want it to go back to normal, we're just going to press this big R, and it's going to reset everything. And then adjust this spline like we did on the other one then we just do that and we are set we have our text movement right there and it looks pretty awesome now there's one extra thing that you can do here if you don't want it to be just uh pretty clean i would say you can go to the settings here and add motion blur now be careful because sometimes with the text effect if you add too much motion blur it doesn't look that well or that quite cool anymore right so it's a little bit it's easy to overdo it let's see also, you have to take into account that when you add motion blur, it's going to take a little bit longer to render. There it goes. And now we have the text animation with the grid warp effect. That is basically the whole process. And then all that's left is for you to be creative and try things and then just go from there.